This is a practical video, so grab your harp and by the end of the video you'll be able to play a small section of a piece with hands together smoothly. And if it works for you, make sure you watch to the end of the video because I'm going to give you a strategy on how to continue practicing this way. Christy Lynn from Learning the Harp, where we make playing the harp feel simple and doable. So if you're enjoying these videos, make sure you subscribe and click to receive notifications, because that way you'll hear about new videos where I can help you with your harp playing. I'd love to see you around. Okay, tell me if this scenario sounds familiar. You are very excited to learn a new piece and you're so excited that you just want to hear that melody. So you start practicing the right hand and you practice it until the right hand is so perfect and then you practice the left hand separately and when you try to put them together you're so discouraged because it's just like your brain can't handle all the information. You keep on pausing and it's just not sounding good. So then you break it down into hands separately again and then it sounds perfect. The right hand is perfect, the left hand is perfect, but whenever you put it together, it's not good and it just doesn't seem to be improving. So let's get down to the problem and sort that out today. Let's apply the situation to my arrangement of Amazing Grace for beginner harp. Um, so the melody of Amazing Grace is so beautiful. So you learn to play through the whole thing with the right hand and then adding in the left hand, suddenly you end up with a lot of pauses. So let's stop that from happening. I'm going to show you how to break it down into very, very small sections, smaller than you think you need, but it's going to work, I promise. Okay, so let's place your right hand two and one on G and C. The G above middle C and the C above that. Make sure your positioning is good with your thumb nice and high and your finger pointing down and that you can land on those two notes together. Okay, practice coming on and off and then practice just playing your G and then your C with two and one of your right hand. Okay, and now before we get any further in the piece, let's add the left hand note. So your left hand is going to play a single second finger on the middle C and that's gonna come in when you play the right hand C. So let's try that. Play your, place your right hand two and one on G and C and your left hand on the middle C below that and your right hand is going to play your second finger and then your left hand joins in. Let's do that again. So this is the important part where you need to stop and repeat this over and over and over until your two hands feel like one unit. What most people do is as soon as they can do it right, then they want to carry on and then they have to pause. But we need to stop here and make it feel like second nature. Okay, so place both hands again and then right hand play your second finger and then join in with your left hand. Okay, let's do it again. Place right hand, two fingers must land together and the left hand on middle C. Play your second finger and join in. Okay, so depending on your level of harp playing and how difficult that felt for you, you may need to pause here and practice that over and over more times, maybe five to ten times. It should start feeling like you can do this in your sleep. It should be so automatic. Um, for some of you, it might feel like that already, but make sure you're really able to do it easily. And then the next little bit, the right hand is going to place your thumb on E, this E, an octave and a bit above middle C, and the second finger on the C just below that, so they are a third apart. Make sure your thumb is nice and high, your fingers pointing down, and they land on the strings together. Make sure you practice that first. And then you're going to pluck your thumb, and then replace it on E again, and you play your two, and then your thumb. And then you end up with everything closed in just a loose closed hand. Okay, let's try that again. So place both fingers, play your thumb, place it again, and play your two, and then your one. So let's practice that a few times. Place. And it's okay if you get that stopping sound. That's okay for now. Okay, so pause here, practice that a few times until that feels really good in your right hand. And then your left hand is going to play another C when you play the second E of your right hand. So let's get your left hand on that middle C and your right hand on um, one and two on E and C above, an octave above that. And you're going to play your right hand thumb 
replace it, play your C, and then when you play the thumb again, your left hand joins in. Let's try that again. Right hand and left hand joins. And again. And one more time. Very good. So pause here and practice over and over and over until you can really do that without any, it doesn't feel like your brain is working hard at all. So it's not just that you get it right. This is the important thing. A lot of people only practice a small section until they get it right once and then they're just so excited they keep on going. But you need to practice it until it feels like you can't get it wrong, until you can play it five times no problem um, without any brain power being used at all then you're only ready to move on okay so you're able to do this and you're able to do this now we need to put those two small chunks together and we need to already be thinking about the second little bit before we finish the first bit. So you can place your right hand two and one on G and C and your left hand on the C below that and you're going to play your two and then your one and now you've got to immediately be ready to place two and one on the right hand on C and E. So you place it on that C that you've just played and your thumb on the E above that and your left hand you've got to be placing the C again. So let's do that. You play the first bit, put, place your two and one on G and C, and your left hand two on C, and you play your two and one, and then you're preparing for the next placement. Did you get it? And we don't even play it yet. You've got to be ready to play and immediately place. And then we're only going to play it. Okay, so let's do it one more time and just place. And place. Again place. So you can pause here and practice that quite a few times because you've got to be able to coordinate when your left hand joins in and then that both hands place before you play the next little bit. So this is what I've been talking about, about practicing very small sections very thoroughly rather than playing a large portion or even just a few measures of the melody and then adding the left hand. We want to take it almost a note at a time. And if you've been struggling with playing hands together, I think breaking it down to one or two notes at a time will really make the difference for you. But it takes a lot of commitment and really a lot of self-discipline because we just want to move on and hear the next bit of the melody, but it's worth doing it this way, I promise. Okay, have you got the first bit and then the placing of the second bit. Only carry on if you have. Now what we're going to do is we place again for the first bit and then we're going to play the second bit straight after. So let's play your right hand, second finger on G right, and thumb on C, left hand, second finger on C and we're going to go. And um, we're going to come in on beat three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Three. Did you get it? Maybe not the first time. Let's try again. Coming in on beat three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let's try again. Prepare your hands. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And don't carry on. <laughs> Stop yourself. That's a very important self-control. Um, so pause here, go back and let me count you through that and do it many times over. Please carry on practicing that until it feels like the hands are a unit, until it feels like this is just flowing through your veins. It's really worth practicing it thoroughly that way. So you can see what we've done now is we've spent quite a few minutes working on just two measures of Amazing Grace. It's really a very small section of the piece, but you can make amazing progress in amazing progress. <laughs> in putting your hands together in a relatively short time if you practice a small enough section. It takes a lot of self-control but it's really worth it. So if this method seemed to work for you and you were able to play with hands together, well done! I'm so proud of you! <laughs> It's a big achievement and I have a suggestion for you on how you can carry on practicing this way. Uh, with this strategy, someone told me that this was the very first time they were able to successfully play hands together with a whole piece smoothly. It's really a big achievement and this is using my video lessons where I take you step by step through learning the whole song in small, very thorough sections like this 
in the video lesson. So if this worked well for you, then make sure that you get the video lesson for the rest of Amazing Grace, or you can look for another piece if you'd prefer a different one, and you can click right over here. And if you wanna watch this video, it will take you through more information about practicing in small sections called chunking. I'll see you there. Bye.